Welcome to the channel once again. We're going to uh, do a barn today. This is uh, Glen Rosa Barn on Vancouver Island in Machosan. It's, uh, it's uh, got some nice features, uh, you know, some darks on this side here, nice hip roof and uh, dark trees in behind here, which makes it a quite a nice composition. And uh, I painted it uh, a few times before and uh, one of the paintings actually hangs in the Glen Rosa uh, farmhouse. That's a restaurant as well. So let's uh, grab our brushes and let's get painting. So first thing I'm going to do here is the sky and I'm going to change the sky from the photograph a little bit where I'm going to uh, start a little darker and I'm not going to pre-wet the paper this time. I'm just going to make sure my brush is loaded up by just lightly rolling it around in lots of pigment and that way I'm going to get a good uh, speed at the top of the uh, page here and if that bead dries you don't have enough pigment on it that's when you start getting those uh, hard lines so I'm going to make sure I've got a nice amount of pigment at the top here I'm going to load it up again and even add to that right there and you'll see it start to pool at the bottom my table is not at that steep an angle it's only I think it's only about 20 degrees although I've never measured it but I don't like it too steep because I find it starts running too quick down the page here so I'm gonna go about here and I'm gonna start introducing a little bit more uh, cobalt blue to that mix and that mix was cobalt blue with a bit of uh, red and uh, making it kind of a purple color. I'm going to make sure I keep that bead going in here because as soon as I don't, as soon as I let that edge dry too much, it's going to uh, give me a hard line across here. So I'm going to keep going with the blue here. I rinse my brush out. I had some leftover, uh, look like uh, some purpley color in my palette here so I'm gonna get rid of that off of the brush and make get some more blue here and not a huge you don't have to be in a huge hurry here but the uh, you don't want to lose that bead that you're creating here and, and what it does is it makes a nice smooth wash here I'm gonna go in and blend that a little bit more here you don't want dryness along that bottom line or else that's when you're gonna get that line so it's getting a little bit dry there. You don't have to dip your uh, brush in water every time, but I'm just going to go over this just a little bit here and blend up into what I've already done here. I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going to start coming across here. Blend that down. starting to lose that bead and starting to get a little dry there so I'm going to load up some more cobalt blue here and I'm going to load that up there oh I didn't nice to have fresh paint in your palette and but if you don't mix it enough sometimes you get a nice clump of strong paint in your on your painting and you just blend it away it usually goes away like that one right there so my brush is just wet and I don't really I don't want to go over that because I don't just muck that up um, and start creating light areas if you get too wet and I've got a little bit of can orange here and I'm just going to transition this area into here while I cut around this barn and go a little stronger with the cat orange behind me I've got a uh, Another mixing tray, it's a, a porcelain uh, dish that a friend of mine gave me. And it works very well. So you got some, we got orange over there, a little hair we'll pluck off of there. And uh, I'm just gonna blend that in like this here. I just want to go over that because I don't want to transition right at that roof line. So there we go. We'll go down like this, like that here. We got a whole bunch of trees here that are going to be left of this uh, barn, but I'm still going to cut around here because I don't want to lose the light colored. 
roof and the the light of the roof is gonna what's gonna really give us our light here blend that down here and then down on this side these uh, brushes this is an Escoda mop brush and they have such a nice point that that you know I'm tempted sometimes to paint the whole painting with a with just the one brush here I've got a line started right here and uh, I'm gonna put some trees I don't like that line too much here into there but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just I don't want it too wet of a brush and just bring that across here and blend that and see what happens I wasn't gonna put clouds in but sometimes if you if you end up with a line across here that you don't really like you end up putting some clouds in. That's not bad, that's interesting. Okay, so we'll bring that down here and then I'll just, I'm just gonna wash this down so I don't get any hard edges here. This is gonna be very dark down under here, right up to about here. I'm gonna leave some light. I'll show you the uh, photo here again. I'm gonna leave some light into this area and the light roof, preserving that, being careful to preserve that. And we got a lot of light in here too. I'm not going to paint this other uh, building here. That's a carriage house, I believe, is what it is. And uh, but uh, then we'll go darker here, and then splatter some paint in here. So. There, that'll work there. And so what we can do now is switch brushes to something a little bit smaller. It's another. Uh, brush from Escoda and these perlas they come to a nice point this is a number 12 but they come to a very nice point so really there's not any really much of a reason to use a smaller brush than this if you're careful with your pigment load on it if you get too much pigment on these on the brush and then you start releasing it into a small area like a window here it just kind of gets everywhere and then you bring your paper towel out and do some uh, repairs to your painting there. I'm just going to blend these little areas that come in from the sky onto the roof here and that's fine. That'll just make a nice uh, highlight there. I'm going to leave that roof for last and I'm just going to see what tone it's going to want at the end here. Now this brush here, yeah I'm going to in, come in here and I'm going to do the end of the barn here. It's quite dark in the shadows. I'll put a neutral gray mixed in with some and a brown color and I know I'm going to want to go even darker than that. There's there's uh, a few highlights in here too and we can add them with gouache or we can scrape them and but I'm not going to really worry about them. You can see it looks like you can see into the barn here into the loft so but I'm just going to paint this coming down here. This one you just have to be careful. You can paint loose paintings but some some things have to be Right, the roof lines and things like that too. And if you don't let that, that's something you don't want to do, is get into your sky. And that's going to be a tree, I know it. Right there. So that what happens is I touch the wet sky still in that uh, area. I touch the wet sky area and it just bled into it, which is what watercolor does. So this may be a little bit early. I'm going to just go here and I'm going to leave a little bit of white into here and under this hip roof business here. And I can just blend that into nothingness over here. Nothingness, I mean, I mean bushes and trees, of course. And then into here, I want to keep that going down here. And really, there's... I want to do a little bit of negative painting already, even though I don't have these bushes in here. If I put this dark in the bushes, you'll never get light bushes ever again in that area. So I'll do that there. I'm just going to leave that like that. Pretend there's a tree into here that you can blend in later. And there's a little bit more dark into here. And the other thing you can do kind of goes dark into there is you can negative paint the other way and just bring these down into where these these kind of bushes and things go use the end of your brush or whatever you've got and, 
And then when you put your green in there, it'll look negative painted. Anyway, it'll come up. And then this, underneath this roof line right here in the soffit, we'll put the, under the soffit, just put a dark kind of shadow in here. And I'm going to change the tone to more of a gray, and I'm going to put something in here. And just let that bleed down into here. Well, it's pretty dark in here. I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring that down. I'm gonna leave, I don't know if you can see with my hand in the way, but I won't be able to do it if I don't paint this way. There we go, I'm just gonna leave that, leave that white highlight there and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna leave a bit of light in here like that. Bring that down like that. There. Um, now in the front here, we've got some, all this barn wood coming down here. And I'm not going to paint every single board in. That would just take too long. Which is fine. You can do that if that's if you like doing that. But they tend to start looking overworked if you do that. There's a, this door here, and I've just got a, I've got a perfect color to go in there, I think, just to give it some highlights and some detail here that goes across like that. And here again, we've got a few like bushes below here. So I'm negative painting already. I'm just getting ready to put those in, and we've got a board going across this way here. So if you got suggestions of some of these boards there, it'll just work. You know, you don't have to put the ball in, but And then the shadow goes right across to this top of the windows like that. And then here we've got a bit of a fence business going on here like that. And the edge here, we've got a bit of a dark, I'm going to darken that edge right there, but I'm going to leave the highlight, sorry you can't see that probably when I'm doing that. I'm going to go in here and just put some interesting color in this door while I'm at it. And just that color difference there, that's going to grab your eye and uh, gonna pull you into that area. And you can tie it in by just adding a little bit of that kind of color into the different areas and it just creates some interest. And over here, I'm not gonna paint in that carriage house. I'm just gonna put some trees and then just blend it and I'm gonna put some grasses in there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna finish the front of this barn later after that dries because I don't wanna blend what I've already done into there. And I'm a different brush here. So I've got some green already mixed up and then I'll actually work quite nicely for this area here. Lighten it up a little bit by just adding some water. And I'm just gonna quickly get the photo out of the way. Come in like that there. And I'm gonna leave this, all the little highlights in here for now and see what happens. Leave it wet and I've got a few little grasses over here that we can paint. Yeah, and it comes down from here, like this. And a little bit into here. I've got some here. We've got kind of these little bushes growing into the fields here. in here and just gonna blend that in like that. Put some of these kind of dry grasses into here. And the paint got a little darker there. I'm just gonna leave that. It kind of looks uh, interesting. Get rid of some of these sparkles because it just sometimes it's just too much. And I'm 
come across here like that. Um, there's kind of a sagey color in these bushes here, and I'm gonna have to mix that up. And there's a few little rocks and things here. Get a little bit stronger in our color as we come across into here. And I want to leave this wet for the effect that I'm going to do in a few minutes here. I'm going to put all these little kind of bushes in here. And you can see, I can see out of the corner of my eye, the roof just starting, the light starting to come out in here. But it's really not going to start out, or the light's really not going to pop until we get some uh, darker darks into different areas of this painting here. And then down here, I've got a bit of... of color showing through into here and there and we had some little rocks and interesting bits in here I'm not staying too true to the colors there's some kind of grayish business going on there and I'm going to put in just a little bit more strong. This is burgundy yellow ochre that I'm putting in here. Some of these areas in here. And I don't use white a lot, but to get some of these tones here, these sagey kind of tones that are going to be in here, I'm just going to add some to start with here. And then I'm going to mix right on the paper here. Bring that across like that. It's pretty light in here. Just the way the light is picked up. Um, picked up. I mean, uh, the light reflected by these uh, little bushes and things here. There. And that'll do in here. Well, I'm going to get some more green. I'm going to. I'd like to splatter them in, but I know I'm going to make a mess here. You can kind of go here. I'm just going to go right across like that. Cut around that a little bit. And then this is really dark into here, so we'll get some of our undersea green going here. This farm is actually right on the, pretty much right on the ocean. It is there's on to the right here. There's a river that comes down into the ocean that gets higher and lower with the tides that come in and out. And uh, and there's a marina at the end of the road behind uh, behind me. <laughs> if you understand what that means. And I've got some kind of grayer colors in here and I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush and see if I can get those into these areas here where these rocks are and before this foreground and thinking about this foreground and how dry it is already here I'm gonna see how receptive it's gonna be to splashing some more colors into there and it's green, quite dark green, but... I'll throw some kind of interesting colors in here. A little darker, kind of a purpley business going on there, so... I can, uh, let's just make a little highlight, a couple of little features there. I like that. We'll get rid of our the light down here because we don't want that catching your eye too much. And we put in some of this brown. Some different spots into here. And then what I'm going to do is splatter just a bit of water.
and it makes a neat effect and I was waiting for this to get in drier before I did that and it's just about right now no oh, you guys saw that I didn't be a big tree there now so I'm gonna leave that there and before this dries too much more I'm gonna grab a rigor brush and you've seen me do this before if you watch some of my other videos I'm just gonna load it up with the pigment that's on there enough of that one and then I'm gonna go with some darker green I did get uh, squeeze out some zoocyte genuine which is another dark green here and I can use for some of these little bushes here and we get some of these areas are really really dark in the photo and it helps bring the light out so I'm gonna paint in some of that in different areas but your eye your eye wants to go to that barn so it's gonna be it'll take a lot to if you paint some features down here to take your eye away from that barn as long as it comes back over there you're all good like that there and then the sagey business here there's oocyte genuine she might turn out and I let this dry too much here this kind of white creamy color that I put in here so I've wet it and I've got some zoocyte genuine now and there's a lot of these bushes right here in this area so It'll blend into what I've already painted here that probably ain't half disappear but it's there anyway and there's a nice green tree right here. Put in some little highlights here. bring your eye back in here after, especially after we put some trees into there we need to put some stuff into here so I got some pigment left on the brush so I'm gonna go ahead and just make some suggestions of trees down to that area there Got a neat color that's kind of mixed on the palette here that's separating into bluish hues. back a little more even and just wet the tops of them just so they kind of disappear and get rid of some of those hard edges a little bit more here and then at the bases of these I'm just going to put some darker colors in and they'll crawl up into the wet pigment here and it'll give you kind of a horizon line that's going on there and we can throw a lot of green trees into there so I'm going to green up the bottoms here and just let it bloom into what I've done there and over this roof line right here this is all trees above here so I'm going to go ahead and paint them in and the rigor brush is good for some 
tiny detail painting like this here. A little bit of yellow into the tops of this tree here. And then there. And bring that up into here a little bit. There we go. Just looking to see what it needs here, and it's almost time we're gonna, it'll end up being, I just saw this dot up here, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can get it out. If it's not too late, you can get rid of them. You don't have to paint birds under there. Okay, so we're gonna put in some trees into here. Looking at the end of this brush, and it's pretty strong. And put it in right here. Careful to preserve the light areas there. It's a beautiful big uh, spruce tree, I guess. And they're gonna go right on the roof there. Preserving the white along the edge of the roof and making sure I still make it look like a tree at this end here. There, quite like that. And then I'm going to get a little bit of quinacridone gold and just make suggestions of some branches into here for interest. And while I have it on my brush, I'll stick a little bit more into the area there. That's all. And then behind here, I've got some trees that are lit up by the sun a little bit more, so I'm going to start with a bit of a brighter kind of color and I might blue them off. I might add a little bit of blue just so they push them back but I might not have to. We'll see what it looks like. Uh, there's one kind of right there. Oh, too much pigment on the brush. Make it a little taller here. Make uh, that disappear into there. I like that. I'm going to leave the highlights in there. Yeah, it makes it interesting. Just like that. And then we're going to work on some trees over here. And uh, see how dry that is. See if this is dry enough yet. Just put some little highlights into here. Not too many, just just some suggestions into there. Done, good. And we got another nice spruce tree here. I'm gonna start a little bit further down. Just check how wet my brush is here. I'm not going too strong because it's in the distance. I want to push that back and then get a little stronger as we get closer to the right side here. There is a no tree into here. Oh, that's pretty wet. And another tree and kind of sticking into here. I'm being a little more careful that I really need to be here, but I I like the composition of this photo, so I'm, that's why I'm being a little more accurate with some of these trees. Normally I would just put them in everywhere. And they're just peeking up over the top of this roof here.
Okay, I'm back here. I think we're going to do the uh, roof next here. So we'll grab the brush that I dropped on the floor. And I'll put that in. It's kind of a... I really have to be careful that I don't kill all the light in this roof panel here. And it's got a bit of a blue tinge to it. So I'm gonna go across here and wet the whole area. And I'll go a little bit. This part of it here is darker, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Like that. And that's pretty much it. I don't this green kind of bled in here, so I'm going to pick it up a little bit. I'm going to leave that as is, right like that, and then uh, I might put in the skylights there. Yeah, get the paint off my finger and stop touching the painting. Get the green off the roof. There we go. So we need a tree where this uh, little blotch is up here, so we're going to get the rigger back out here and paint us a tree. And we'll drop in some a little bit darker color into this one here. go darker into the, just to blend this in a little bit and tie it in with that tree there. Pretty big tree. And on the right side here, we get the light coming from the left, so I'm going to put the right side a little bit more in shadow here. And just put a little, some highlights in here. And if I go a little darker right at the base here, it'll make these, the foreground brighten up a little bit like here. And I can bring those in here like that. And like that, put that into shadow. Add a little bit of uh, some quinacridone gold into here suggestions of branches and I'm going to blend some of this a little bit here because it catches your eye a little bit too much and blend that into here and leave that highlight there. Okay now these little uh, windows in the front here I just want to tone them down and I'm just going to put some blue like they're reflecting the sky on them here. You don't have to do too much, just a, just a little bit. It's nice if you leave some kind of white highlights on them and it uh, makes it look like reflections a little bit more. I don't know if I want to make, yeah, I'm going to do that just like that, make it look like the rain bits on the roof here. Now on this roof there are some little skylight things and they kind of look brown and I'm hesitant to put them in but they kind of need it so I'm just going to be very careful where I put these. Like that. Just like that. And there's three of them so I'm trying to space these things evenly. And I'm matching up this line here and this roof line over here too. And one over here. There's too much pigment on that 
on the brush there. It was a little bit too wet, so I'm gonna dry the tip off and I'll just suck it up with the brush. Looking better there. And this side here looks to be, but needs to be a little bit wider. Like that, and there's kind of some streaky business going on here, so I'm just gonna bring it down into here like that and wet it to blend. And there's kind of another skylight here, but you better, you barely see it. And the angle that I painted, you'll be able to see it a little bit more, but just like that. There, well that'll about do it for this painting. I think we're gonna maybe uh, clean up the edges here, maybe put a little bit of gouache there and uh, brighten up maybe a little bit around these windows. And after that, we can pretty much uh, sign it and call it done. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, it helps me out. And uh, we will see you next time. Grab your brushes and paint. Have a great day.